Okay. Let's start with part one, which is predictive analytics. In this part, we are going to define what predictive analytics is and look at the two important considerations for predictive analytics these days. So what is predictive analytics? Well, predictive analytics deals with extracting information from data and using it to predict trends and behavioral patterns. There are two important parts in this definition. The first part is extracting information from data, and the second part is predicting trends and behavioral patterns. When it comes to extracting information from data, data is nothing but facts that have the lowest level of abstractions. For example, take these two data points. The location of the house is five kilometers, and the mode of transport is bike. When you process this data, you can create information out of it. This, this transformation of data to information often involves adding some sort of context to it. So in the same example, information could be something like this. My house is five kilometers from work and I bike to work. Notice that I've added two contexts. One is uh, myself and the second is work. The subject and in areas involved in extracting information from data are information systems, computer science, and others. The techniques that are commonly used include data mining, parsing, and so on. Data mining is a concept that you're familiar with. Parsing is, is the process of transforming or is the process of analyzing strings of symbols, associating it with some sort of rules of grammar, and transforming it into a form that has meaning. Predicting trends and behavior involves understanding what is going to happen in the future by analyzing the information that you have. So in the same example, a trend could be something like this. People who live about five kilometers from work would bike to work. The subject areas involved in this, in these, uh, in these predictions are information systems, statistics, and so on. The techniques that, that are used are regressions, machine, le machine learning, and uh, artificial intelligence, and so on. Nowadays, predictive analytics is faced with two important considerations. First is the emergence of big data, and the second is the integration of social media data into the day-to-day -day activities of individuals and organizations. When it comes to big data, big data management in, gets in, uh, get, uh, is associated when traditional data processing methods cannot handle the volume, velocity, variety, veracity of data. Notice that I did not, did not include values for volume, velocity, variety, and veracity. This is because big data management is, by definition, is very dynamic. So about 20 years ago, if you were saying, if you said that you were dealing with 20 gigabytes of data, then it would, then it would probably qualify as big data. Nowadays, the gigabytes of data can often be, um, can often be opened in, in a personal laptop, which has sufficient memory in it. So it does not really qualify as big data these days. When it comes to volume, Big data volume often involves petabytes of data. The, the question that you need to ask if you want to figure out if you're dealing with big data or not is, is do you have enough memory to open it and run analysis on your personal computer or system? If you do, it probably does not qualify as big data. A good example for a big data problem is that of autonomous vehicles. Each vehicle and generates terabytes of data each day from its various sensors. An interesting question that may come up in your mind is, how big can data get? This question is not easy to answer because beyond a point, data, uh, be beyond a point, size becomes very conceptual. So take for example, 10 to the power of 100. While it is easy to represent in paper, it uh, represent in paper, Conceptually, it's a very, very large number. It, in fact, exceeds the total number of atoms that exist in the universe. This number is known as, as Google. In fact, the organization Google 
originally intended its name to be Google, but due to some spelling mistake or something of that sort, Google became uh, Google became Google. Velocity deals with the speed with which you are receiving data and the speed with which the data that is coming in needs to be analyzed. Consider the example of autonomous vehicle. You need the data is coming from its various sensors, which needs to be analyzed and the response needs to be given within a fraction of a second. Variety deals with the, the different forms and formats that a data might be coming from. Take the same example of autonomous vehicles. The, way, uh, the different sensors involved in autonomous vehicles include radar, lidar, and camera. Each of these sensors generate different sorts of data and the format with which the format of the data is also different. The last, the last V is the veracity. Basically, you're trying to understand is the data that you're receiving actually accurate? Take the example of autonomous vehicles again. The, the data that, that comes from its camera could be the billboard image of a person walking or a or an actual or a real person walking on the road. The vehicle must be able to figure out which of the two it is and respond to it appropriately. Now let's come up with a rule of thumb to figure out if figure out what is big data. Basically, you are dealing with big data when 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 the data is so big and and is coming so quickly that uh, that it cannot be stored and processed at a later point in time. And at the same time, the data, uh, data requires complex processing because of its variety and veracity. The second new consideration is social media analytics. Social media analytics involves extracting information from semi-structured and unstructured social media data to predict trends and behavioral patterns. What is structured data? Structured data is basically data which is very predictable. The best example for this is tabular data that you see in Excel sheets. In these Excel sheets, the column headers define what, the data, what each column com comprises of, and the row headers uh, gives you information about each of the sample in the Excel sheet. In contrast, unstructured data does not have this nice uh, tabular format. Unstructured data could be text, could be speech, could be text, organized in various, various uh, unpredictable ways. In social media analytics, textual analytics is the most common, uh, common form of analytics that you will see. The main source of textual data is, uh, is reviews of products and services. And, comments in, and the comments that is received in various other forums. The techniques that is used to analyze textual data include sentiment analysis, tone analysis, and many others. When it comes to speech, uh, most analytical work is centered around speech recognition. Actually, speech recognition is a fairly old analytical problem that has been studied since the 70s. Now speech recognition is quite advanced with applications like Siri and Alexa, not only able to recognize speech, but also are able to analyze and make some sort of sense out of it. The techniques that are used uh, for speech analytics is voice identification, tone analysis, and so on. When it comes to analyzing images and recognizing objects within images, we are somewhat still at an infancy. But the good thing is we are seeing progress almost on a daily basis and new techniques are being developed uh, almost every day. One of the biggest projects for image recognition was started at Stanford in 2006. The, this project was called ImageNet Project and was started by Fei-Fei Li. The objective was to develop a neural network model that could recognize om objects in an image. This is a very ambitious task. This is actually a very ambitious task. To develop the neural network solution, they first needed a large sample of images with different objects identified in it. The idea was to allow, uh, allow the neural model to learn and mimic what an eye can do. 
So to generate this large sample of what is known as a label data, that is a, a set of data with, uh, with set of image data with objects identified in it, the project hired about 48,000 MTurk workers to label, uh, to label objects in a set of about a billion images. The neural no network model that was built using this label data comprised of 24 million nodes, having about 15 billion connections. But just consider that the human brain has about 86 billion neurons to begin with. So the current state of image recognition is still not that great, but it is developing very fast. Right now, it, it can be compared to that of a three-year-old child. I've given the link for the, for the TED Talk given by Fei Fei Li. Uh, it's quite interesting and, uh, and you can go through this uh, and you can go through the link at your own leisure.